So Netanyahu, everyone's favorite Israeli leader, <laughs> went to uh, address Congress today, a joint session, and the vice president did not go. She's currently the presumptive Democratic nominee in this upcoming presidential election after Biden dropped out a few days ago. Um, and the junior senator from Alabama, the one that is apparently going to be the Republican nominee in 2028, held a press conference where she sharply criticized her. And I, I see it as interesting because it's, an, it's a preview of what we're going to see over the next couple of months. So I'm going to play it and I'll talk about it. Thank you, Senator Ernst, for organizing this important press conference. Today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will come before Congress to ask us for help. America has a responsibility. We have an obligation to keep our promises, and we have to show that never again actually means never again. Failure to do so will mean that we will let down our tremendous ally, and we will look weak once again on the world stage. We must stand strongly with Israel and show the, her the support, not just in normal times, but in trying times when she needs us the most. I think it's a shame that Vice President Harris won't be here, literally won't be here, standing with Israel today. She isn't presiding over or attending Prime Minister Netanyahu's address. And look, to be honest, she doesn't have many jobs as the Vice President. She was put in charge of our border. We know she failed at that responsibility. She was supposed to fill in for the president during ceremonial times. She failed to greet Prime Minister Netanyahu when he landed in the United States. And she's expected to preside over joint sessions in which foreign leaders of Congress are present. Once again, she's failing at that too. Time and time again, she has chosen not to do her job. But now she's asking the American people for a promotion. Let's be clear. The Vice President could be here today if she wanted to. She has chosen not to fulfill her duty. Instead, she's at a conference. Look, I am all for her attending a conference. The conference lasts five days. Does anybody in this room think that if she had told the people in the conference that she, the Vice President of the United States, would like to address them, but just needed to adjust her time, that they wouldn't have allowed her to do that? They absolutely would. She's choosing not to be here today. She could have fulfilled her obligation. Once again, the Biden-Harris administration is sending exactly the wrong message, a message that is sure to further embolden our adversaries. It's past time to reestablish credibility in the American deterrence and for American to provide Israel with everything she needs to permanently end the threat of Hamas. Strength is the path to sustainable peace, not weakness or appeasement. Make no mistake, Israel has more than a right to defend herself. She has an obligation to do so. America can and must help Israel fulfill that mission, help bring every single hostage home, and help bring about sustainable peace through strength. It is time we use every tool in our toolbox, including those that will help dry up Iran financially. We've done it before under the Trump administration, and we can do it again. Today and every day, Senate Republicans proudly stand with Israel. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing, isn't it? That sometimes you can listen to an American politician talk, and you could almost forget that they're not an operative of a foreign government. So Brit's criticisms of Harris are that she has failed to do her job by not presiding over this speech uh, because of one of the jobs of the vice president is to provide, pres preside over ceremonial things relating to b b both chambers of Congress. You know, my, my thing is this. If Netanyahu wants to give a speech where he's rallying for you know, the, the American people, or at least the American government, to stand with him. And there are American officials who do not agree with his conduct and thus do not want to listen to his tirade. I think whether they're a congressman, a vice president, or a senator, they should be able to step out of it. 
And let's just be clear about one thing. I highly doubt that if this were the Palestine Authority or some Iranian official or what's another country that we don't favor? North Korea's, you know, Kim Jong-un. I highly doubt if one of them came and dis and said, I'm going to address a joint session of Congress or is permitted to address a joint session of Congress. And, the, and Harris was like, I'm not going to this, that you would see Brit complaining about uh, her failing to abide by her duties. And this is really the part that's so interesting to me, that as someone who's kind of just observed the way Republicans have talked about the, the Israeli-Hamas conflict, where they've always just stood so steadfastly with the Israeli government with to where you would just think they were these angelic angels that, that got attacked by those evil Palestinians for no reason. I, I, I found it interesting that up until a few days ago, very rarely did I get I hear Harris get mentioned. Like the most you would hear about her was, oh, she didn't save, you know, fix the border. Uh, even though, as I've explained before, Biden gave her an impossible task that she had no real control over because vice presidents cannot just snap their fingers and pass new laws to mitigate the conflict over there. So it's, it really is just them taking something that they know she couldn't do much about because a vice president doesn't have the power of the president and using that to make her appear more incompetent than she actually is. But I, I like the line that, you know, she feels that she deserves a promotion. Well... Um, welcome to politics. I mean, most of these people that hold these offices are looking for some way to get themselves ahead. Like, it's very rare to just see someone become governor or senator or vice president. Like, oh, yeah, that's that's as far as I go. This is this is the full extent of my ability. I mean, like I said, Brit is in all likelihood going to run for president herself. Um, either in 2028 or, you know, even further down the line. I, I highly doubt she's going to just be Alabama senator for the next 20, 30, 40 years if she can't make it to the White House herself. But putting that aside, it's so sad to watch these people just... Like, again, I know the Republicans and Democrats are always going to be at each other's throats, whatever, whatever. But they really have nothing on Harris. Like, when they would talk about Biden giving money to Ukraine, you know, or uh, even with the, you know, like calling for a ceasefire, not calling for a ceasefire, rather, during this Israeli-Hamas conflict, I could say, okay, whatever. But they're, they're real, like, her main criticism of Harris is centered around her not sitting down in a room listening to the leader of a country that is, oper that is operating his government in a way that she is diametrically opposed to. That That is the big critique that this conference and, and these several minutes of remarks are, of hers are centered around. And by the way, if Israel was as strong as they tried to make it sound, they wouldn't need American money to be able to fix it, to their, their problems. And that's always what I thought is so funny. You have, you have let's remember, remember, you live in a country where 60, where over 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, where a majority can't afford a $1,000 emergency, and these bastards on Capitol Hill will, will shell out billions of dollars to a foreign country before they'll even think of raising the $7 national minimum wage for the first time in over 10 years. And, and these are the people that you're supposed to trust and think are going to better you and fix problems it's, it's all just such a joke but i'm I, I i thought this clip was important because it is a preview of what they're going to do to harris for the next three or four months make her sound like she is the most anti-israeli candidate alive and completely turned a blind eye to any of the human rights malfeasances of that government because the israeli government is their sacred cow that get and they get money from APAC to turn a blind eye to anything that Netanyahu and his band of crooks do to Palestinians and any other group they can oppress.